Jackie Tan rightly quoted that coffee is a language itself. And at today's guest, mastered this language well. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to yet another episode of FNB Talks powered by the Restaurant Times. This is Pratiya Hooja and our today's guest is Mr. Chatanya Chitta, the co founder of India's second largest online coffee brand, Slay Coffee. Inspired by the New York's coffee culture, Chatanya took the pandemic as a challenge to evolve and grow. Slay Coffee is now the highest rated coffee brands across all the leading food delivery platforms. Welcome, Chatanya. It's amazing to have leaders like you here in our community. Thanks a lot, Prachi. Thanks for having me. Uh, and uh, I've uh, seen a few of your episodes. Uh, it's good that you guys are doing this initiative of uh, bringing the stories of the brands. So very glad to be here. Thank you so much, Chaitanya. So before I start, I would really like to know, you know, how the idea of starting coffee delivery brand came into existence. And we all have heard about the cloud kitchens, of course, but the idea of a cloud cafe is indeed unique in itself. So how did the entire process started with the business idea? Uh, sure. Uh, so I have to kind of go down in the memory lane. Uh, but uh, uh, the the quick answer to this is uh, uh, we were trying to solve uh, our own you know pain problem as a as a coffee lover right mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Lakshmi who is uh, my co-founder as well as uh, you know uh, my wife uh, uh, we both uh, do uh, slay uh, we've been doing uh, drop cafe which is the company actually uh, this is our seventh year the brand slay is uh, you know has finished three years but uh, when we started back in 2015. Uh, you know, the idea was uh, simple uh, and came from, uh, uh, you know, as I said, the customer pain point that uh, in a place like Bangalore, uh, you have, obviously, Bangalore is the home for, uh, you know, the Indian coffee scene. Um, you have uh, high-end cafes and you have, obviously, a lot of uh, South Indian, uh, you know, what uh, typically we call uh, the UDP uh, coffee joints, right? Somewhere, uh, we felt uh, there is a huge gap in terms of, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, a, a somewhere in the middle, which is something more accessible, uh, more uh, approachable, more convenient, uh, and also uh, uh, something that can uh, coffee lovers can actually go on a daily basis. And the convenience also comes from the fact that uh, in the current day and age, uh, you know, uh, people want everything, uh, not just one cuisine, but we all want, we're all suckers for convenience. Uh, so uh, we thought uh, coffee is such a functional uh, and uh, powerful uh, uh, beverage. It's not just people obviously drink coffee, uh, you know, obviously for its taste, aroma and all of that, but it's also the urge, the need of caffeine, right? So uh, we, we just realized uh, that uh, uh, let's, let's explore the possibility of uh, making good coffee accessible and more convenient. So that's really how it started. And online slash delivery was sort of the first expression of it, right? Because uh, typically when you think of it, beverage delivery, I mean, I uh, lived in the U.S., uh, uh, for almost a decade before moving back to Bangalore, uh, you don't have a sort of a coffee uh, on demand online delivery, you know, still established anywhere else. I mean, it's still a very largely new phenomena. And uh, in that regard, uh, we we started just like any, uh, you know, startup with a, with a MVP of, uh, hey, listen, let's test it out. Let's put it out there and see what people say. Uh, and we got a lot of people who basically, uh, you know, uh, responded well. Uh, we uh, started uh, the pilot, and then uh, yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been sort of a very interesting uh, learn journey for us, uh, where we scaled. Uh, now we're a pan India brand with almost 150 odd uh, cloud cafes. We also have coffee bars, uh, which is our offline takeaway coffee bars, uh, where mm -hmm. uh, we essentially are solving for the you know great coffee every day, which is the brand's proposition. Even for people who want to uh, have a quick, uh, you know, uh, pickup or either uh, on the way to the work or, uh, you know, they are uh, at work, travel, play, any of those situations. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, the vision is uh, coffee is very functional. Coffee is very powerful. Coffee is, uh, you know, probably the only legal drug. How do you make coffee more accessible, uh, more, uh, you know, convenient uh, for a country like India, where obviously the cost, our, our generation, we are solving for not yesterday's generation, not today's generation, we're solving for tomorrow's generation. So I think uh, we see a huge opportunity for, uh, you know, uh, uh, this thesis, uh, mm -hmm. you know, where uh, the, the per capita is also very less at the moment. Uh, if you think of it, only the top three, four, five percent of the, you know, consumers actually frequent the cafes. So I think, you know, essentially all of that coming together, uh, but uh, to pull it back into one single uh, sentence, 
it started off with uh, us solving our own pain point absolutely love the love the journey so this brings me to my first question chatanya like the indian market is a very new idea of coffee delivery and despite being a number of cafe brands delivery has always been you know a difficult task due to the logistics due to the packaging issues and besides this there is a general preference what i believe for tea over a coffee brand you know here in india so considering all these challenges what was it like to you know introducing a brand like slay to the indian masses and how did people received it initially and where do you see the brand going in the next few years yeah so let me let me obviously uh, answer this in two parts uh, sort of uh, what were the things that we thought should be uh, you know sort of uh, the core uh, product uh, or the brand promise and uh, what sort of our learning uh, then i'll i'll address the second part of the question which is uh, our plans uh, our future plans so uh, from from the get go we were very clear that uh, you know uh, we have to stand uh, uh, you know the brand proposition has to uh, be something as i said uh, end of the day in fnb uh, people want uh, something that's uh, you know consistent that's good quality that's something you know they they can uh, come back to without uh you know having a second thought so how do you kind of build uh, uh the entire proposition like when we think of a delivered uh, you know a gourmet coffee specialty coffee that you basically get delivered mm-hmm. it will involve a bunch of things right i mean obviously we have to get uh, uh, first the product the menu right uh, you know uh, and then the packaging right and then you got to get the rest of the other stuff like for example we have uh, if it's a hot coffee uh you know it has to reach at a certain temperature otherwise there is no experience of having a hot coffee similarly cold coffee in summers if you get a you know a classic cold coffee which is one of our uh, slay coffee's best sellers uh you know if you get anything above 12 13 degrees temperature right you won't get that you know the uh, the the pure delight of having a cold coffee right mm-hmm. so i think a lot of things have to come together so uh, you know just like any product development uh, and, and our journey still continues to be the same uh, thesis or philosophy we kind of unbundle what all goes into it from the time uh, of where do we source our coffees from what kind of uh, blends we have to develop what kind of uh, final menu that we uh, have in the you know uh, so for example we don't do a lot of uh, uh, if you see our delivery menu we don't see um, you know whipped cream toppings or uh, cappuccinos because that's anything that's more amenable for a, a dine in or a sit down setting in a cafe won't be possible so you you see a lot of uh, flavored uh, hot coffee flavored co- cold coffees or americanos obviously uh, are good uh, and then lattes and all of that right so i think what within the broader menu what basically is suitable which is a uh, delightful for our customers because they they are there is also an existing behavior of people uh, you know our consumers drinking that kind of coffee so uh, you know a lot of uh, back end work in terms of product development then followed by packaging so now uh, if you think of it um, you know what what we uh, uh, do is uh, we essentially serve uh, every cup at a individual level um, you know to the extent that each cu- cup is basically made for that particular customer you can customize a cup of slay in multiple ways you can you can choose the strength of the coffee you can choose uh, uh, whether you want an extra shot whether you can choose whether you want a flavor you can choose whether you want dairy or a vegan milk you you can choose whether you want sugar so essentially there is a lot of unbundling of the the cup of coffee that we are offering to the customer so a prachi's cup of coffee versus a chaitra's cup of coffee will be very different so getting all of that and then having it uh, you know completely uh, made for you and then getting it delivered in the optimal experience where you feel i'm sitting in a cafe and actually enjoying it without even stepping out of my comfort so i think that's really uh, you know uh, something uh, uh, we we are proud as a team we've been able to achieve um, and uh, while we do all of that we also are very conscious that um, uh you know uh, coffee is something that if you like it you stick to it right i mean there is a lot of uh, you know if, if we all basically have our preferences uh, you know for example pizza or uh, biryani we may have our favorites but we kind of occasionally go and try different brands but when it comes to coffee you know you you tend to kind of stick to uh, you know because it's it's a, such a functional such a utilitarian uh, product you don't want to keep on drinking five different coffees in five days of the work week uh so have, the reason i'm saying that is uh, there is a huge emphasis for us on making sure that our customers come and drink slay almost on a daily basis and hence you know hence the whole uh, proposition that we say it's great coffee on every day basis uh so for that you got to make it convenient and you got to make it uh, you know um, 
uh, customer friendly in terms of affordability also because we're not saying that hey listen come and say, sit in our cafe and spend 600 bucks once a month that's not our business uh, so i think uh, between that's that's where the distribution comes in that's where how do we sell um, you know and even our offline cafes uh, for that matter uh, we're not we are still making the same prices that we sell online uh, even uh, available in offline uh, and the reason for that is uh, uh, you know uh, for our customer it's the same customer you know when you are at uh, home uh, or at work you don't have time you just go on uh, either our app or uh, swiggy zomato and order a cup of coffee mm -hmm. when you are out uh, you are on your way or you are basically shopping you pick up a slay coffee uh, from one of our coffee bars and a lot of our customers brew their own coffee so we have a range of packaged coffees uh, so you know if you are if you're already a customer of slay you would like to whip up your own coffee brewing at home so we have a packaged coffee range so essentially the same customer she is having coffee in different occasions for different you know purpose or slash of movements of consumption how do we kind of make sure that our customers uh, have their pure coffee joy uh, in all these occasions uh, you know in a consistent way so that's that's uh, essentially sort of the guideline for us um, and uh, one of the things that always kept us honest was also uh, the fact that we are a digital brand we are digitally native and digital first we do get a lot of data so we look at customer feedback on a daily basis for example so our our day you know starts with uh, cross functional teams coming together and checking you know what's what's our customers feedback rating uh, and what are the things that went good what are the things that didn't go that good and it, it's it's a constant feedback loop and uh, 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 in this is actually a great time for uh, any consumer brand businesses to build because you have the power of customer uh, insights feedback on a such a uh, you know um, uh, short time on a on a such a uh, you know easy basis for you to actually mine so uh, and that that's the reason because we made it a priority for us uh, we constantly look at that as a priority or what we call like you know the most important metric kpi uh you know we've been consistently uh, there is a lot of room for us to grow i mean i'm not saying we're doing everything well obviously we're doing a lot of things good but there is a lot of opportunity to improve as well but uh, that reflects on our ratings as you also mentioned uh, in the intro uh, we've been consistently rated well because right. customers like the consistency customers like the convenience customers love the fact that you know what we're doing is basically very unique and all of that um so i think that's hopefully answers your first part i'll keep the second part rather simple um our plans are big i mean we want to uh, make slay uh, you know if not the most dominant coffee brand uh, you, you know one of the top 2 3 brands uh, and more importantly we we want to create sort of a subculture right i mean the idea of uh, you know our uh, the customers that we serve are are conscious uh, they are they are very self assured they are very you know uh, action oriented uh, you know slay is really powering that lifestyle so i mean we we are essentially building a business uh you know with coffee as a product but we're essentially a lifestyle brand so we we see ourselves uh, to be to play a meaningful role in our customers uh, uh, across india for the next 5 6 years uh, our plans are to establish uh, you know hundreds of outlets uh, in our offline uh, online we already have uh, a significant network and also uh, there are some interesting uh, uh, you know uh, opportunities that we are looking at in terms of uh, how do we make uh, a slay coffee accessible uh, more to workplaces thanks to people coming back from the pandemic there is a lot of demand corporates are asking us to have slay uh, dedicated slay counters at their corporates or slay coffee uh, you know in iot enabled uh, you know vending machines and stuff uh, and uh, my real dream and obviously lakshmi and i both are really keen about it uh, is to take slay international as well at some point uh, you know we have plans to take it uh, to to build uh, uh, you know i think our friends uh, at some of the other brands have already done either it's wadam tea uh, who is doing a great job in teas or even blue tokai uh, matted blue tokai they already opened in tokyo i think uh, there is a huge opportunity for brands in, from india to actually expand globally also Uh, but yeah i think our plans are uh, uh, quite uh, exciting and ambitious and hopefully we uh, will get there soon amazing to listen to it chatan i just wish your coffee holic approach goes to the great world and we all you know continue drinking slay every morning so this all conversation brings me to the next question that you know slay is something i am a huge fan of slay's packaging it's stylish quirky and lively So, what is your take on food packaging and you know food packaging experience? I'd say. Also, how important do you think is to include a variety in your coffee business or any business of F and B you are doing ahead? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Uh, 
see as consu- uh, as consumers uh, uh, we are increasingly uh, you know being conscious of mm. not just the product but the overall experience uh, so i think uh, uh, we are also very conscious of the kind of choices we make so uh, you know uh, uh, somebody a good friend of mine from um, uh, you know some senior fellow from brand marketing uh, she once mentioned that uh, uh, the customers actually express themselves by the choices they make you know you essentially wearing a particular designer brand or you know or you're going to a certain uh, you know uh, a place essentially is your way of saying hey this is basically what uh, you know i care about i like or my lifestyle right so having said that uh, in any product and especially it's more relevant in fnb uh, firstly the role of packaging is uh, the way we look at it slay is threefold one it has to be functional uh, then it has to be you know experiential slash uh, you know you're adding another layer of delight okay. and the third and the third it's everything to do with are you doing the right thing you know beyond the product and experience are you doing something beyond for the you know the greater good in terms of being conscious being sustainable being uh, you know you're not adding uh, too much of uh you know uh, collateral damage because we are consumers and whenever there is consumption there is a side of so the packaging of functionality uh, experiential layer of uh, further delight and then being conscious less sustainable those are the three that we always look at when we make our packaging choices functionality for example if you look at slay packaging which uh, you know i'm i'm sure you uh, you are aware of okay. one is uh, one is how we kind of you know uh, uh, basically take a cup of uh, coffee we seal it and we make sure that it's in a there is a three layer packaging so essentially look we are carrying a, a hot beverage our rider partners at swiggy and zomato we should make sure that they are not getting you know uh, a hot beverage being spilled on them so okay. we we ensure that either our customers or our uh, rider partners none of them have any issue in terms of having a, a hot beverage being you know uh, spilled on them and uh, uh, it's a uh, uh starbucks uh, or some other uh, uh, couple of brands in the west actually got sued because you know there was a uh, hot beverage spillage so uh, the whole functionality comes in there the experiential part you know how how we designed say for example our slay case the artworks now you're ordering a cup of coffee firstly a lot of customers they say that they keep their slay case they actually make use of it they do bunch of different things and they sometimes people say they just love the package and they just keep it on the desk and kind of look at it right so even though they order you order a cup of coffee what we are saying is hey listen if i if i can get it to you in a functional but at the same time give you something like you know a little bit more artsy something that is pleasing to your eyes and makes you you know happy in that moment when you are consuming the coffee that's the experiential layer of it and the third and most important is the sustainability and being conscious so right from day one we are a plastic free brand we always use paper cups we always used uh, you know materials i mean that's the reason we do that is because our customers actually demand that our customers are conscious as i said so as a brand so serving uh, customers uh, you know who are conscious we are always cognizant of the fact that we should be you know making responsible choices so between the functionality experiential layer and sustainability as three pillars is how we go about uh, solving for our packaging very well you know put it in words so about this i really want to ask you one thing you know slay has been always slaying with its marketing and as you said your slay case right from the crowdsourcing campaigns to branding it has always been very catchy so we would really know like to know you know your approach towards marketing and branding for slay yeah i think uh, i have to give credit to a bunch of uh, you know uh, young uh, uh, you know team uh, who always comes with uh, some really uh original ideas uh you know and then uh, they kind of test out uh, uh the idea of uh, innovation is very important and when we talk about innovation either it's at the product side or the marketing side if we if we put a customer first approach and we try to basically build uh you know uh, our marketing and our branding all of these decisions with a customer centric view uh, that always helps for example as i said i'm uh, go taking back to uh um, you know the data part i was telling about a lot of insights we get from customers i mean they tell what we're doing right they tell what we're not doing so right that gives you a sense of uh, you know fixes as well as if something is really going well right then you know hey listen i think if this is what's working why don't we actually tell that more to our customers because that mm-hmm. sounds like it has a lot of positive resonance uh, so uh, as far as the ideas are concerned uh, you know a lot of the uh, you know initial thoughts come from our customer feedback then what we do is the team quickly looks at 
you know a couple of ways to kind of materialize it either it's some in some cases it's a crowdsource campaign in some cases it's actually you know trying to collaborate with somebody and what not um now when it comes to execution i mean we we actually are somebody who uh, believe uh, uh, in just uh, uh, keeping it authentic keeping it real i mean in fact there is a lot of storytelling that um, you know uh, as a young brand we are we are actually planning to do and we do a little bit of it it's really to kind of tell what what goes behind a cup of coffee right and what's what essentially you know either it's uh, to do with our product the questions that you're asking or uh, what does it take uh, to be a slave barista so we do a lot of showcasing of who are our baristas i mean you know some of them actually are freshers uh, they come from you know far flung states of northeast or even kashmir you know and then how they kind of have the first experience of working with a barista and then showcasing sort of humanizing the entire thing right i mean what we are saying is as a brand we care about actually the delight of our customers uh, by giving a, a good cup of coffee cup, uh, you know one cup at a time right so a, a lot of uh, we don't necessarily believe actually in marketing as such it's i personally as a founder uh, and uh, a part time marketer i believe that um, it's about storytelling it's about actually telling your story it's about telling being authentic and kind of showcase customers um, you know in true light uh, what's all happening Uh, but uh, you're right. I think uh, we uh, we have some really crazy uh, customer uh, uh, crowdsourced and customer uh, uh, you know co-sourced. I would say we developed some uh, flavors. In fact, last year uh, we developed uh, our uh, Christmas uh, New Year flavor uh, based on customer uh, you know insights and competition. We do our sleigh uh, case artwork every quarter. We refresh it. That actually comes from our uh, customers. It just it just another way for us to engage uh, uh, with our customers uh, beyond just our core product. Uh, because I mean, they they are, our customers love it, uh, and uh, there is always a lot of excitement for them to take part. We just we just want to do it better so that we can scale it further. So Chetanya, this was like an amazing insight. But what I found very interesting about sleigh is what do you mean? by when you say that slay is a people first brand also how important role do you think you know the staff selection plays while running a big chain yeah so uh, again a, a very pertinent and very pressing question for uh, you know i think attrition in general is pretty uh, a plaguing problem and especially in sector like fnb it's a it's a challenge absolutely uh, so i think uh, uh, as as a young brand uh, you have to create uh, that inbound interest so firstly uh, look i think uh, it's a, it's a very uh, factual thing that you can you can make people uh, you can hire and retain people by a lot of rational reasons rational reasons being you know obviously you pay them well you train them well you uh, you give a lot of uh, uh, you know support guidance and make sure that you are you are you are a right kind of employer and right kind of brand to take care of the people uh those reasons actually are all important but i still feel that's a hygiene layer i mean every company which is basically every brand that's worth its salt does all of this but mm-hmm. you also need to start doing certain things that are unique for your business for your culture for your brand because your customers care and based on your customers and your broad broader ecosystem and brand promise what are certain things you do that resonate well with your employee base also that creates the beyond the rational reason which i would say is the cultural emotional reason that you feel hey listen i'm you know i work for slay coffee and you kind of proudly uh, wear that on your shoulder right so that's really where we try to build our focus on so for example uh, we uh, have a lot of uh, uh, barista slay barista uh, you know empowerment uh, and uh, uh, development policies uh, and thanks to our talent team uh, you know uh, we have someone called richard she's from uh, uh, fnb sector lakshmi herself uh, uh she is a uh, she her uh, background was in uh, human resources talent so they they come up with a lot of original ideas on how to do around people right so i'll i'll touch upon a couple of uh, quick uh, examples um, so we have uh, uh you know an education uh, support policy where any barista who wants to uh, pursue any education it's all company paid either within coffee outside coffee so you know it's a simple uh, thing no questions asked we support them in their education pursuits because a lot of them they start very young they start at 19 20 21 some of them may haven't even finished their college so we consider that just because they're working with slay doesn't mean that they need to stop education so we help them in terms of pursuing their education some of the people actually have done uh, pursued higher studies and what not the second is whenever there is a anniversary of our baristas we actually 
uh, reward their family members. We send money to their parents if they are not married, or to their parents and their uh, better half. Uh, in uh, you know, just to tell that hey, listen, you know, we recognize obviously that you know it's it's a combined effort. Uh, similarly, every uh, because it uh, the third one uh, is uh, we do we've been doing it from day one. We tie back uh, every barista's customer feedback, their rating to the monthly incentive they get. So every barista basically gets a customer feedback rating based on which we actually say, "Hey, listen, you got X number of ratings that are positive, that are great. You get this much of incentive." So they also know that, "Hey, listen, I mean, I'm actually making a great cup of coffee. My customer appreciated it." And we also one of the things we do is we put our barista's uh, face on a cup of slay. So you know, our take is. Uh, uh the customer should know who made the <laughs> coffee whether you're online offline doesn't matter so i think these are some of the simple things uh, and, and it's not like uh, all of them are uh, uh, things that we started we took inspiration from some of the other employers other companies that have done great work but the idea is we define our own cultural dna and uh, coming up with uh, you know policies and uh, practices and rituals to enable those behaviors and uh, that culture will give us the long term advantage of we not just building uh you know employees or a uh, workforce we're we're building actually an organization of people who actually think feel and act together this was just an amazing one to hear from you sir and now it's like amazing when when you know people are getting appreciated and rewarded on the basis of the work they do so coming on to the last question that we have is now india is a huge consumer of coffee as you stated yeah this gradual shift from tea to coffee has been always you know a different culture and i am definitely sure that with with this shift we have a great competition in the market that we can definitely see increasing these days what are your thoughts on you know competition and also how do you maintain a consistent identity throughout so um i think uh, i'll uh, again have to cut this into two parts one is uh, tea versus coffee the second is uh, uh, if i understood your question right you're saying uh, how do we plan to basically build the competition sorry how do you plan to outstand the competition like how do you maintain a brand right. consistency right okay so firstly look um, tea versus coffee you know there is uh, there is uh, there is no competition as such right i mean see i i'm a tea drinker as well i i i have to have my afternoon uh, you know masala chai uh, we order a lot from all the uh, you know my uh, friends uh, you know who are is in the beverage business of uh, so chai and co- coffee are not competition uh, i think a lot of people uh, uh, may be in the bucket as i am uh, but what we realized is the indian uh, coffee consumption story is just starting so uh, for example you you have certain categories if you look at pizza as a category right i mean 25 30 years back it was non existent now you know it's a it's a multi billion dollar category and uh, you know there was a time when people used to go to you know uh, pizzerias to celebrate birthdays and it's your social hangout now yeah. it's like it's your comfort food abhi friday ko matlab you need to chill you just order and you eat and then you know there is no there is no tamasha around pizza it's like your you know comfort food so each of these cuisines they kind of evolve like when it comes to coffee um you know you have a strong uh, uh, southern coffee of you know filter coffee that trend is there which is culturally deep rooted but when you think of broader coffee parlance it's basically instant coffee which people drink at the time uh, all the time in north south sab jagah pe and then you have a cafe culture thanks to coffee day thanks to bunch of other international brands also that came into india starbucks costa and all of them so for the millennials for the gen z for the newer generation of people coffee is increasingly becoming the first choice of beverage uh, and uh, the reasons for that are you know essentially the same reasons why we are all watching more netflix <laughs> you know why we are all you know suckers for uh, anything that's basically more aspirational more uh, you know um, i won't call it western i am not saying that we are aping western but it just as as we are maturing as uh, as uh, people's uh, you know Uh, aspirational values are increasing as as you have more choices as you obviously have more you know uh, disposable income uh, you know in general it's it's like uh, as the lifestyles improve there is actually a, a very important saying uh, it says that as the lifestyles are improving coffee essentially goes very close to it as yes. india is growing right coffee will grow it's as simple as that um, so i think uh, we we are seeing uh, the next 20 30 40 years a great uh, opportunity for uh, india and uh, you know coffee as a sort of a subspace within the fnb 
and by the way whatever happened in markets in asia for example china this happened last 10 15 years back indonesia this is happening for the last decade like indonesia is one of the largest coffee producers and indonesia always had a, a very sorry scene of coffee which is instant coffee now indonesia is going through a, a huge boom uh, a lot of brands building it so i think um, uh, just to summarize uh, uh, we are just at the early stages of a coffee uh, you know i would say uh, uh you know the growth of a coffee curve uh, in a country like india for all the reasons i mentioned uh, so there is no competition uh, tea and chai will have its place uh, coffee will have it's not like a zero sum game coffee will be sort of incremental on the top now the second question within coffee the competitive landscape how are we planning to essentially establish lay as the you know uh, uh how do we carve out our own sort of spot right so it's uh, it just goes back to you know uh a simple uh, brand vision proposition that i was trying to articulate at the start also uh, we just believe that uh, a good coffee uh, should be accessible uh, should be convenient and should be uh, affordable uh, in the sense that you can drink it every day without even thinking mm-hmm. uh, for example our we don't uh, we do everything to make sure that uh, our our customers who are coffee lovers uh, get a cup of slay uh, in the least amount of friction as possible whether in terms of spending time spending money so we say hey slay is great coffee because we save you time and money right uh, so our proposition is singular uh, and we do everything to make sure that uh, uh, our customers get a great coffee consistently uh, in the best way possible and there you got to do a lot of innovations so i'll just quickly tell you three four innovations so that you kind of get a perspective your your listeners also will get a sense of what i mean by that Mm-hmm. so something uh, can be great uh, only when you are essentially giving something that's not there or that's you know disproportionately better than what you have in the market so uh, when it comes to for example uh, you know coffee uh, we take the pride that uh, our coffees are always freshly roasted from the time they are roasted till the time they are cup uh, you know if it is in days you can actually get the uh the wonderful uh you know all the ingredients of uh, coffee what it's supposed to be so how do you bring supply chain uh, and uh, you know in a day where at 11 or uh, 12 o'clock in the night we think of a, a, an item we order it on amazon by the time we wake up we have that uh, item delivered we okay. live in a, we live in a supply chain where anything is possible so how do you bring supply chain to make sure you can actually do better experience for the customers in every aspect right so it's uh, uh, the freshness of the rose it's uh, certain blends we develop so we have a blend called slay x which is india's strongest coffee blend and uh, again one of the insights we got from our customers is our customers want coffee to be you know something uh, that will you know wake them up that will you know uh, make them essentially more energetic which is the end purpose so we uh, realized uh, there is a indian robusta robusta is one kind of a coffee uh, variety uh, you know arabica and robusta are the two most popular ones mm-hmm. indian robustas are very popular uh, to have a high amount of caffeine so we developed a blend uh, you know sourcing it from uh, our uh, plantation partners in chikmagalur and uh, we we sell the slayx a lot and people love it uh, so how do you kind of innovate based on the customer insights i'm not giving something an average coffee i'm giving a f- the most precious coffee a blend that is high in caffeine but you can really enjoy it. and then when it comes to packaging we already spoke about right how do you innovate on packaging you know it's it's not like your earlier people used to deliver coffee in your sambar dabbas in you know in bangalore right so you just bring some amount of differentiation and then finally how do you bring technology also so even though we are a fnb company i mean we we use technology to a large extent we we have a blockchain enabled traceability to take care of you know our supply chain how, where are the coffee is coming from when are the roasted and all of that similarly uh, we are now looking at how do we build in a layer of iot enabled automation so we can control the espresso quality for example you know how much time it's taking for me to extract a cup of coffee uh, uh, you know espresso to so there a lot of uh, uh, those uh, exciting you know interventions innovations that you can do to make something that is simple get to uh, a next le- level of, level of uh, you know uh, improvement right uh, so i think innovation is at the key uh, we we uh, also uh, believe that uh, as a brand uh, if you are uh, always customer first you always solve for your customers problems uh, you do everything else right so we have four values uh the first one is customer first uh, everything that we do is based on what our customers uh, you know ask us demand us uh, you know would expect from us uh, that would essentially take care of uh, you know that would give us the brief to me 
you know, uh, Lakshmi, my entire team, right? I mean, we basically will be always be in the know on what we are doing right versus wrong. Um, so I think uh, the way I see it, um, firstly, uh, there is a huge amount of opportunity macro uh, as a country. Uh, you know, we, we have a huge opportunity in coffee. And the second is there is a lot of, uh, you know, shift in the consumer behavior. Uh, Pre-pandemic also, uh, online takeaway as a trend has started. Post-pandemic, people are now looking at omni-channel experience. I want to order, I want to pick it up, I want to go and dine in, I want to make something at home. So suddenly you're talking about four use cases. And we're going to solve our uh, slay as a coffee category in all the four use cases. You can order online, you can pick it up offline, you can make it at home, or you can just you know, come and have a uh, experience uh, in a dining setting at our lounge, all of those things. So how do you kind of keep consistently looking at uh, customer data and come up with innovations and look at the bigger picture, uh, uh, you know, and uh, always keep innovating. So I think that's really what we believe is our, uh, you know, our call to action, our mantra. <clears throat> now, as I said, it's not a zero sum game. We know that we can uh, uh, easily, you know, we have a few millions of customers in every city in India. So if we can, we're not trying to sell coffee to everyone. We are what we we consider uh, uh, a coffee lover to be our customer, people who really care about their coffee. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Absolutely, Zatanya. It was amazing, lovely hearing this answer from you. It was an amazing talk with you. And this brings me to the end of the session. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you keep inspiring everyone like you've always done. Thank you. Thanks for having me and all the best uh, to you and your team.